hey everyone, thanks for coming to the talk. I'm Binghui Peng, and I'm going to talk about our work on the complexity of dynamics and modular mechanization. And this is a joint work with Xi Chen. Okay, uh, here's an outline of the talk. I will first give some very general backgrounds and motivations for the problem of dynamics and modular mechanization. I will then uh, overview our result and uh, give some takeaway message. And finally, I will uh, sketch uh, a high level overview of our approach and point out some future directions. So first, uh, in a some modular maximization problem, uh, the function is defined uh, over a ground, this, this, uh, ground set V, uh, and the size of V is uh, of usually assumed to be N, and uh, a set functions assign a non-negative value to every subset of the ground set V. And uh, we also define margin, uh, which is defined with respect to any set A and uh, any element U. And we say the margin of U with respect to A is defined as uh, the value difference between FA union U minus FA. And uh, we assume the set function satisfy the monotonicity property uh, which says uh, a larger set always have larger value. And also we assume the sum of modularity property, uh, which set for any set A, uh, and which is a subset of B, uh, the margin value of U with respect to A is always greater than the marginal value of U with respect to B. Okay, so modularity uh, naturally captures the diminishing return property and it's very useful, which I will explain in the next slides. Uh, in a submodular maximization problem, uh, usually the goal is to select a subset of k elements that maximize the function value. And uh, the problem is usually studied in the query outcome model, meaning that our the algorithms can query any subset of the ground set, and uh, it uh, uh, incurs a unit cost. And the submodular maximization problem is a core discrete optimization problem as many applications. Uh, for example, uh, in combinatorial optimization problem, uh, the mass k coverage problem can be classed as a submodular maximization problem uh, because the coverage function is always submodular. Also, in economics, the submodularity property naturally captures the diminishing return property. And the has a location in combinatorial auctions where the bidders is usually assumed to have some modular value. And also it has application in social network domain uh, where our canonical uh, problem is uh, the influence maximization problem where the goal is to select a subset of users over a social network that has, a, that has lar largest possible influence. And uh, the influence function under many Cascading model uh, is submodular, so one can use techniques from submodular maximization. Also, uh, more recently, uh, the submodular maximization found the many applications in machine learning, like active learning, unsupervised learning task like feature selection, and data subset selection. Okay, uh, so motivated by the vast uh, theoretical and practical application. Uh, there's a large number of literature over this problem. And the most classic uh, one is, is actually given over like, uh, fifth, uh, like about, about 50 uh, years ago, where people discover that uh, greedy algorithms actually uh, gives one minus E one approximation. And it's also proved uh, uh, that uh, this is essentially the best one can hope because the exponential number of queries are needed to beat this one minus one year approximation. So upon that point, there are many uh, uh, work in the literature focused on extending uh, the problem to more general constraints. Like instead of selecting at most key elements, we want to select a subset the subject to a more general constraint like Metroid. And also one can relax uh, the assumption of monotonicity. And uh, in, in the past uh, 10 to 15 years, uh, due to the application uh, domain, 
where usually incurs large amount of data, the Samojong maximization problem has been studied in different computation model. For example, in parallel or distributed model, people try to improve the runtime under this computational model. And well, in streaming and dynamic model, people try to address the aspect that the data usually comes uh, in an online fashion. And the, the focus of this paper is on the dynamic submodular magnetization, which I will introduce in the following slides. In a dynamic submodular magnetization, the algorithms maintain a set of K elements over a stream of N updates, where the updates could uh, include insertion or deletion of ground set elements. And uh, the goal is to maximize the function value at each time point, and also at the same time, minimize amortized query complexity. Uh, uh, as I noted here, so because you can always run the offline greedy, uh, which gives you one minus one information, and uh, it has essentially requires omega n queries per update. So the natural regime one wants to consider is, is to design some dynamic algorithm that has only poly k log n uh, among test query or even poly log n among test query. And the question one wants to ask here is what kind of approximation guarantee is achievable under this sub, uh, sublinear update regime? Uh, before I mention the, uh, the literature uh, to this problem, I want to first uh, uh, mention a few applications of the dynamic submodular maximization problem. The first uh, application arises from machine learning domain, where in a super unsupervised learning task set data and feature subset selection problem, we are the task is to select a medium size but high quality data from a huge uh, raw data set. And the problem can be cast as a submodular magnetization problem. And but the, but the problem here is that due to the more law of, of data, the data set, the, the volume of data set is growing almost exponentially every year. So when there are more and more data sets coming in, we want to refine the selected data set. And this requires the design of a dynamic algorithms. Also in application domain like social network, for example, in an influence maximization problem, one wants to maintain a set of K users has, has good influence over the network. And because the network is usually subject to change in every day, in every second, so it would be desirable to design a dynamic algorithm for the problem. Okay, now I will uh, go dive into more uh, directly related literature on this dynamic submodular maximization problem. So as I mentioned before, the bottom line uh, is to run the greedy algorithms from scratch. It has good approximation guarantee, but uh, the amortized query is, is omega n per update, which is quite slow. And there are some recent breakthrough uh, by uh, Latinians et al. And they, they give a one half approximation algorithms with only poly log n amortized query. So the amortized query complexity is quite slow, but the approximation seems now to be optimal compared to the offline solution. So the key question we want to address in our work is whether we can achieve one minus one approximation with only poly log n amortized query complexity. So our main result uh, is a lower, is two lower bound. So first, our first lower bound says that actually no algorithms can achieve 0 0.58 approximation with little o of amortized query. So uh, because you know one minus one e is approximately like 0 0.63. So this means like uh, you, you cannot achieve this approximation unless you pay omega amortized query per update. And our second result is to show that actually no algorithm can even achieve one half plus epsilon approximation with only n to the little o of epsilon amortized query. So the key takeaway from our paper is a separation between dynamic and static setting. We will prove there's no hope to achieve 0.584 approximation unless you run the greedy from scratch. And second, we saw a fifth transaction on efficient algorithms. To achieve one half approximation, actually by, by the Latinx work, there's no overhead, essentially. But we proved like in order to achieve one half plus approximation, 
you must incur a polynomial overhead. The next quick question we want to ask is when can we achieve one minus one approximation for free? Here meaning we want to design algorithms that achieve one minus one approximation with only polylogarithm number overhead. So what we managed to show is that under incremental update or insertion on the update, where you only insert ground set element but not delete them, then there's a simple algorithm that achieves one minus one approximation with only uh, polylogarithmic uh, amortized query complexity. And I want to mention this insertion only model is quite natural in the application domain because, for example, in the data subset suggestion problem, you just gross your data set, but it's very rare like you want to delete your data set. Okay. Now uh, I will proceed and give a high level overview of our approach. So, first, I will talk about the linear lower bounds. So, so in general, for it's in general, it's very hard to prove a lower bound for dynamic data structure problem. Uh, but fortunately, the some module maximization problem is considered in a query model. So there's some hope to prove some like polynomial lower bound. And actually our intuition is quite simple and intuitively. We, the, we, 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 we essentially, we want to show like the following hidden matching problem is hard. So first, uh, the function is defined over ground set element of a1 to am and b1 to bm. The function value of any single element is always one. And the function value of ai union bj equal to two if i equal to j. Otherwise, it's always one. And the function value of ai union aj also equals one. And up this stream, it's, uh, we first insert all elements a1 to am, and we always keep them. We then insert B1, delete B1, insert BM, delete BM. Essentially, we want to solve M, some module maximization problem, where the M's, S problem is that you insert BI. And uh, you, it's really a matching problem because uh, once you insert BJ, you want, we hope you, the, the only thing you, want, you can do is to query any subset uh, of size two, and and you want to find the the corresponding element of a j. Okay, and this is essentially like a hidden matching problem. And uh, of course, there are some challenges to this uh, basic intuition. The first comes from the fact that the aforementioned uh, function is actually not submodular. So in general, there's some tension between some modularity because it's a restricted function you can construct versus the utility gap between the matched and unmatched instance. Also, the second challenge comes from that the query algorithm does not need to necessarily query ground set of size two. It can query some large set and do some binary search. For example, in a aforementioned problem, if the query algorithm do some binary search, then it's only log and queries per update. Okay, I will describe the high level principle simple to uh, make our lower bound work. So the first is we create a large gap. We want the gap of match and unmatch the instance to be large. And in, in order to resolve the non submodularity issue, our instance is based on coverage function, which is always submodular. And we encode the MSV hard instance into the function. And the second is, in order for the lower bound to work for any adaptive or query algorithms, we want each query to reveal very little information. And we, we managed to do, do it by making all small queries to have some indiscriminability property. And for any queries that queries a large set, we just cap the value and make it uh, useless to the algorithms. So I want to note that eventually our hard instance is not a coverage function because this, the, 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 uh, because we kept the value for large query. Okay, I will then move to the polynomial lower bound and recall we prove that no algorithm can achieve one half plus epsilon approximation with n to the little o amortized query. And uh, the high level idea is to boost the the aforementioned two-level construction into a multi-level construction to increase the utility gap. 
And uh, we construct a hard update stream uh, by performing random depth first search. Okay, so the idea is to create a multi-level hidden matching problem. And uh, the, now the ground set is no longer a, sing a single instance of bi-level matching instance, but it can be seen as a tree. And uh, we want to force the algorithm to for us, for any algorithm that achieves good utility to solve a hidden matching problem at each level of the tree. And uh, the good thing about this tree construction uh, is that it increased large gap of utility. So it has, we make sure that there's, there's only one pass uh, at, at every time step of the update stream. And uh, suppose we assign one over L weights to each level and uh, we and, and, and we, we, we make it open to select K over L elements from each level. Then one can show that actually one half is the best thing the algorithm can do. But of course, algorithms can choose multiple, um, you know, more than K over L elements from each set, uh, each level. So we use a non-uniform weight eventually, uh, followed by the, pre uh, the previous work. Okay, finally, a major issue that we cannot prove a uh, linear lower bound is that each node would incur large update overhead uh, in, in the tree-like construction. And what we do is we need to carefully balance the size and we'll perform some um, random DFS for the update stream. Okay, finally, I will talk about our algorithms. Uh, we show like uh, under incremental update uh, model, there's an algorithm that achieves one minus one year of confirmation with logarithmic amortized the query complexity. The algorithm is very simple. We just use greedy and some lazy update idea. So roughly speaking, we always maintain a good set, a, set, a solution set as, and we only uh, add element to the set. And uh, we also maintain, a pro we also store the approximate margin value of every element in the ground set with respect to the current solution set. And uh, we divide the approximation, uh, the margin value into a constant number of buckets. And, uh, and we run the greedy, following greedy algorithms. So each time when a new element arrives, we just compute its margin value. And if it's greater than uh, some threshold, we just add update the solution set. So note here is without loss of generality to assume we know the optimal value because it's one, 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 one can guess its value by some binary search uh, procedure. And once we update the solution set, we go over all the existing element. And the, 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 and the, the key reason that uh, our the, the algorithm has a very low update uh, overhead is that each time you add a, each time you either add an element or you move an element from uh, the top bucket to the next. And, the, and the, the, the later thing can happen at most constant amount of time. So eventually our algorithms has only polyrogamistic uh, overhead. And finally, I want to point out a few interesting uh, directions for future research. So first, uh, as usually done in this field, one can consider more general constraint like matrix constraint, or you can relax the assumption of a monotonicity. Actually, for matrix constraint, we have an algorithm in our paper with k to the minus the epsilon minus two um, has square root complexity, uh, which is sublinear, but uh, it's uh, it's not that practical. Also, another direction one can consider is to consider white box model. For example. Uh, in the max k coverage problem, it's actually a white box model. You can directly count the amount of running time instead of query complexity. And actually, I have a follow up on this and prove that uh, assuming a strong extent exponential time hypothesis, no algorithm can achieve any constant approximation for max k coverage with little of amount of query, which is in sharp contrast with uh, which the query model where you can achieve one half approximation. Okay, I'll end the talk here and thanks everyone for coming. And uh, you are very welcome to check into the details of our paper.